Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Mr. Ronan Levy this morning. He's joining us here from Field Trip Health to discuss what to look for before investing in a psychedelic company. He's going to talk a little bit about bringing ketamine-assisted therapy to the mainstream, how Field Trip created a household name in a saturated psychedelic industry. And he's also going to touch a little bit on what it takes to make it in the psychedelic drug development field. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Ronan. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, what is your uh, professional background? I'm uh, actually a recovering lawyer um, mm-hmm. by by training and practice, uh, but I mostly quit the practice of law about 10 years ago when I struck out as an entrepreneur and opened my first business, which was actually in the precious metals and gold industry, um, but slowly but surely worked my way over to being actively involved in uh, establishing the medical cannabis industry in Canada and mm-hmm. beyond, and then ultimately uh, into psychedelics and field trip. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to date myself a bit and uh, talk a bit about the psychedelic 60s. You know, there was lots sure. of talk about dangers and pitfalls of, of LSD. There was lots of talk about government programs, uh, Russian programs, all kinds of things using psychedelics. But as far as anyone was concerned, it was in the same category as all of the other illegal drugs as far as, you know, marijuana, heroin, things of that nature. How has this, uh, I guess, reemergence of interest in psychedelics as a therapeutic come about? Yeah, so I'm certainly no conspiracy theorist. Theorist, I think it's pretty well established that most of the decisions made in the late, late 60s and early 70s were based on politics much mm-hmm. more than they were on science. And, and the science around psychedelics was actually quite persuasive, um, but they represented a challenge, I think, in many ways to the existing government under the Nixon administration. Um, and, and so research got shut down. And then what what's really happened is one, we're in the midst of a global mental health crisis. You know, it's estimated that one in five people globally will experience some clinically diagnosable instance of depression and anxiety, and, and current medications just aren't working. So we've got the, the unmet need happening very significantly. And then about 20 years ago, ketamine, um, which many people affiliate with being a horse tranquilizer or a party drug, but it's actually one of the most important medicines we have on the planet. In fact, the World Health Organization has identified ketamine as being an essential medicine because it is an incredibly safe anesthetic. <clears throat> in fact, it's given to just about everybody, every soldier in the Vietnam War to carry with them in the event of injury. So, so safe, in fact, that if you have children and your children break an arm or, or you know, get a cut uh, and, and the ER doc feels that anesthetic is appropriate, ketamine will be the drug that's given in most instances. We're talking about a very safe medicine. And then what happened about 20 years ago is researchers noticed that people who were given ketamine as an anesthetic also reported significant improvements in their mental health. Uh, And so uh, a lot of research opened up pursuing ketamine for mental health treatments. And kind of on the back of that, as well as ongoing research in Europe um, and the UK looking into psychedelics, uh, interest in psychedelic therapies uh, and the research around that was reborn and and with good cause, you know, what we see is that contrary to what we learned in high school, um, that psychedelics by and large are non-addictive. Uh, the risk associated with being an overdose in, in most psychedelics is non-existent. Uh, and they lead to profound transformative improvements in, in mental health. And, and so based on a, a couple of uh, studies about 10 years ago into psilocybin and MDMA, uh, we're, we're in the midst of the psychedelic renaissance that is, is really in full, full force now. Now, as far as politicizing of uh, psychedelics, when you say that they're safe, what is it that's so safe about them other than uh, not be, being non addictive because, you know, the, your opioids highly addictive, uh, e- even cannabis, you know, it is addictive. What is so safe about it? What does it not do? Sure. So, I mean, safety can be looked at from a number of different angles. From one perspective, uh, Professor David Nutt, who was the equivalent of the drug czar uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, when he stepped into that role, decided to take a science-based approach to drugs as opposed to a policy-based approach to drugs. Uh, And so he commissioned a study uh, and it was actually published in The Economist and, and I think the journal Nature as well. Uh, And they found in looking at categorizations of 
harm to self and harm to others. Psychedelics like psilocybin, uh, MDMA, ketamine, and LSD were actually amongst the lowest harm profiles. And that included comparisons to some pharmaceutical products. So um, so in terms of harm to self, harm to others, uh, psychedelics are very low. Uh, in terms of risk of addiction, they're very low. Uh, in terms of risk of overdose, they are very low. Uh, and in fact, there's been two FDA clinical trials uh, completed in the last year or so one looking at psilocybin, one looking at MDMA, and in both cases, psilocybin-assisted therapy and MDMA-assisted therapy. It's not just giving a drug. It's actually part of a therapeutic protocol, um, and found that there were virtually no severe adverse events. So looking at it from the perspective of how the FDA assesses whether a medicine is safe and effective in, in both instances, at least in, in the various phases that they are in, uh, both were deemed both safe and effective. So in, in just about every classification in which we assess a, a medicine or a therapeutic, uh, psychedelics seem to be passing with flying colors. Now, there are those who may be regretting the decision to invest in uh, opioids. What should I look for if I decide that uh, the science is sound, the safety measures or, or the safety reports are solid, and I would like to invest in the development and delivery of psychedelic therapies such as Field Trip Health? What should I look for? Sure. So I think the most important perspective, as with any uh, investment in any drug company or pharmaceutical company or biotech company, is really looking at their intellectual property. What makes them stand out relative to the competition? There are a number of psychedelic companies that are pursuing drug development, seeking FDA approval for psilocybin. Psilocybin is well categorized. It's been well studied since the 1950s. Uh, and so there's no real intellectual property that can be grabbed for, for psilocybin. Uh, these companies are instead hoping to make a return based on something called data exclusivity, uh, which is basically if they do the studies, the FDA will grant them five years where no one else can use their data um, to seek an approval. Field trips approach and the approach that I would offer to investors, um, admittedly, I'm not that objective because it is the approach that we took, is to look at developing new molecules. The studies around psilocybin and MDMA are fantastic. Uh, you know, they should be safe and effective, but it doesn't mean we can't do better. It doesn't mean that we can't find drugs that are, are shorter acting. So it doesn't require a full day in a clinic like you would expect with MDMA and psilocybin. Uh, drugs that are more tailored, drugs that have even improved safety profiles. Again, MDMA and psilocybin are quite safe. doesn't mean we can't make them safer. Um, and so that's what I look for is, is look for companies uh, that are developing new medicines with intellectual property that's defensible uh, and gives them a 13-year <clears throat> protection window as opposed to the five-year <laughs> window that you get with data exclusivity. And then I'd look for management teams that have experience, who have built businesses before and, and really know how to, how to run a company uh, because there are a lot of, I won't say there are a lot, there are some entrants in the industry uh, of people who are very enthusiastic and very keen but don't necessarily have the experience to, I think, be successful in the long term. Well, if you would, give us a website where our listeners can learn more about Field Trip Health and about the, uh, the science behind psychedelics uh, as it stands today. Sure. So I'd invite people to visit our website, uh, which is fieldtriphealth.com. That really offers insight into what we're doing with our clinics, uh, providing ketamine-assisted therapy to people right now. It's available in North America and perfectly legal. Uh, and then we have a corporate website, meetfieldtrip.com. Uh, which provides more insight and information into our drug development program uh, and, and the projects that we're working on there. Great, great. Ronan, I appreciate you taking the time joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Ronan Levy. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.